on the 19th of October 2017, we were visited by something that scientists couldn't initially explain. It was called a Muamua, and astronomers first noticed this object travelling through our solar system. The object in question had come from another solar system, and people quickly started to speculate what this object was. A.V. Loeb, who is the chair of Harvard's Department of Astronomy, claims that he thinks he's found proof of extraterrestrials, and this comes in the form of a muamua. Now, though one resident from East Lake is attempting to make contact with the space object, and goes on to question why scientists haven't tried this yet, saying that researchers are quick to say that this thing is a rock, but yet haven't tried to send signals to it. It's rare that we have objects like this fly by us, so he found it strange why they wouldn't attempt to make contact with it. Mr. Hill and his team will use a powerful radio transmitter and antenna array which is located in Arizona, saying that their plan is to send signals to a muamua in the hopes of getting some type of response. The transmission was sent on Christmas Eve, and went on until December 26th. Mr. Hill said the following, You know, I think it's very important, I think, to transmit back to this object. They're actually pointing the array and the antenna in the direction of a muamua. Truly, if we're not alone, and what the team members believe is that when a muamua came through our solar system, it might have been waiting for the proper response, the proper transmission that had the right key. I think it's super important because they need to know that we're ready for contact. End quote. Cleveland State University researcher astronomer Jay Reynolds responded with the following. We have never photographed this object. We are basing it on the evidence. This object is very reflective and also has little thrust, so it's accelerating out. But there's no evidence that this is anything but an asteroid or a comet. So to what gain? Because there's no evidence to suggest that there's anything there to receive a signal or to respond to a signal. You and I can send out a signal tonight and get a response, but it's not confirmed until someone else does the exact same thing and gets a similar response. So until then, it's all speculation. In order for all science to be accepted, it must go through a rigorous investigation, a rigorous confirmation process. But it's people like me that say they may be wasting their time when in fact they might not be. So give it a look, that would be very exciting. I would be very excited. So go ahead and do it. I'm all for it. End quote. This response was criticised by people online though, saying that is this really the right attitude to have when it comes to life outside of our planet? Telling people that they can do these tests but it won't mean anything until it's peer-reviewed. Mr. Hill is working alongside Richard C. Hoagland, who is known for his commentary during the Apollo launches. He said the following, Just like we're trying to get Oumuamua's attention, if we can get the scientific establishment's attention, then we will have succeeded. End quote. Interestingly, A.V. Loeb says something similar, when he suggested that the mysterious space object Oumuamua may be an extraterrestrial probe. He detailed that the object in question is incredibly thin, and had an extra push that made him question its origins. He said the following during an interview, I said maybe it belongs to another civilization. I just put it in a scientific paper and didn't think much of it. We didn't have any press release. Then it went viral and the public got extremely interested, and the thing that really surprised me is my colleagues were pushing back. They were very upset that this possibility was even mentioned. We had a seminar lecture about this subject at Harvard, and a colleague of mine after the lecture said that this object is really weird. I wish it never existed. Now to me, I was really appalled by this. How can you say something like this? You should be happy whatever nature gives you. You learn something new. If it doesn't look right, it actually teaches us how it's a learning experience. We learn that we have to revisit and rethink about the way we view reality. 
That's a good thing, that's not a bad thing. You shouldn't always be in your comfort zone. And I think that the future is going to be the same as the past. So I actually see it as a blessing. End quote. A murmur showed a really strong non-gravitational acceleration. This tells the researchers that its motion indicated that gravity was not the only thing dictating its path. Many people have put forward their theories, one of which is that this object is extraterrestrial in nature. The fact that it moves like nothing researchers have seen before could indicate that it's under intelligent control. Mr. Siraj, who was the director of interstellar object studies at Harvard's Galileo Project, said the following. The nitrogen conclusion has received a lot of attention. However, we show that the nitrogen model requires a mass of heavy elements that exceed the total quantity locked in stars. The absolute theoretical maximum, which means that the model is ruled out. We don't know what a muamua was, we just know that it's not nitrogen since the mass budget would be untenable. There's no way to know what a murmur was since it's already gone. All plausible possibilities, including the artificial origin one, must be kept in mind during observations of future interstellar objects like a murmur. All of the existing theories regarding a murmur's provenance invoke never-before-seen astrophysical phenomena including an ultra-porous aggregate a hundred times less dense than air, a planet fragment that was tidally disrupted, exotic icebergs made of almost pure hydrogen or pure nitrogen, or a piece of artificial technological equipment. The close-up study of an object like Oumuamua from outside of the solar system, whether natural or artificial in origin, would reveal unprecedented insights about planet formation and life in the universe transforming humanity's understanding of our place on the cosmic stage. End quote. A.V. Loeb continued with the following. There are many cultures that existed in the past that we don't have direct access to, but we can find their relics and I think we should think about space in the same way. It's much more likely that things existed and they're not around anymore, due to self-inflicted wounds or from natural disasters. You can have an asteroid impact or a flare from a hostile sun, something which happened with the planet which basically eliminated life. But until that point, there was a culture that created infrastructure that we can look for, and we can look for megastructures that are left on the planet or around the planet, or a tiny swarm of satellites that were artificially made. We can find things from the surface that indicate there was a war, or you can find technological equipment, artificial lights that exist even though this civilization is dead by now. You can find industrial pollution. Unfortunately, my colleagues are not thinking about these possibilities when they explore planets elsewhere. They are extremely conservative and they focus on primitive life. I don't see why we should put binders on our telescopes. We should be open-minded to the possibility that we're not alone. End quote. So what do you make of these studies and comments? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comments section below, and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.